So this is the video lesson for section 9.1. Now I do apologize in advance, this video is probably a little longer than some of the others. Um, and that's just because I show you lots of examples in this uh, section. But technically in chapter 7, that's why I have this kind of connected with chapter 7, we already learned a little bit about naming ionic compounds. So we're just going to go a little bit further with this section 9.1. Now 9.2 on the other hand is a little bit more confusing, so I'll be covering that one in class. Alright, so 9.1 is all about naming compounds that start with a regular metal. You may think, well, what is considered a regular metal? A regular metal is anything in group 1, not hydrogen though, because of course that's not a metal, group 2, or aluminum. Okay, so you have group 1 on the periodic table, group 2, or aluminum by itself, um, not hydrogen. Okay, so if it starts with one of those elements, then you are going to follow these rules. So first of all, let's talk about ions. So a monatomic ion, mono means 1, is a single atom with a charge. For example, in a plus or O with a negative two. Those are examples of monatomic ions. They are one atom with an overall charge. Now, when you name a cation, which a cation is positive, remember the T looks like a little plus sign. So when you name a cation, the name of the element does not change. So K is potassium. K with a plus one charge is also potassium. When you name an anion, on the other hand, and anions are negative ions, the ending of the element changes to IDE. Okay, so for example, O is oxygen, but O with a negative two charge is oxide. So that's where we get potassium oxide for a name. Okay, that's where we get chloride and fluoride and things like that that you've heard of. Okay, so positive ions keep the same element name. Negative ions, we're gonna change the ending of the element to I. So, there are other types of ions though, and they're referred to as polyatomic ions. Poly means many. A polyatomic ion is a group of atoms with an overall charge. So, for example, SO4 with a negative 2. Okay, if you haven't received one already from me in class, you'll be getting a little sheet that has a list of our polyatomic ions on it. Okay, so when you hear me talk about polyatomic ions in this video, you should have that little sheet so you can see where I'm getting the formulas from. They're just on the sheet. Most polyatomic ions on your little sheet end in either eight or ite. The ending does not change when we name a compound. Okay, so for example, if something ends in SO4, SO4 is sulfate, we don't change the ending to I. We just keep it as sulfate. Now, the only time that it is going to change is when we learn how to name acids, which we're going to talk about that later in 9.4. So the eight suffix indicates that the polyatomic ion contains one more oxygen than the polyatomic ion with the ite suffix. So what that means is sulfate is SO4, negative 2. Sulfite is only SO3, negative 2. So the 8 and ite endings just indicate that the 8 has an extra oxygen. Okay, regular, you don't have to memorize the polyatomic ions. Honors, unfortunately, you do. Earning those five extra points. All right, so honors, make sure you're studying that list and look for little, you know, you gotta look for little similarities like this and little ways to help yourself memorize those polyatomic ions. All right, so let's look at some naming then. The periodic table is set up to help us learn how to name. Okay, there's four different types of rules that we'll use for naming. One is for the regular metals, which like I told you already is groups one, group two, and aluminum, but not hydrogen because that's not a metal. All right, that's what we're gonna learn to name today is the ones in pink. All right, next we have the transition metal compounds. That includes groups three through 12, which of course are the transition metals, but it also includes the elements up under the stair step, like if I was to draw the stair step right here. The elements up under the stair step and the lanthanides and actinides. All of these elements can have multiple charges. So since they can have multiple charges, we have to um, use a different type of naming. We aren't gonna learn these today. You'll learn those in class with me. Then the next set is the non-metals. So if it starts with something over here, then it has a specific way of being named. And last, if it starts with hydrogen, it's usually an acid. And so we'll learn how to name those acids. Okay, but today we're just gonna focus on how to name compounds that start with one of the pink ones, one of the regular metals. All right, so let's look at how we do that. So what are the rules? Well, for regular metals, where are they? They're located in groups one, two, not hydrogen, and aluminum. Aluminum is the one people forget about, of course, because it's all the way by itself on the other side of the periodic table. When naming a compound that starts with a regular metal, you name the metal or the cation 
and cations, remember we do not change the name in any way. So sodium, potassium, calcium, they all stay the same. And add ide to the non-metal or the anion. Okay, so if we had chlorine, it becomes chloride, nitrogen becomes nitride, so forth and so on. So if I had NaCl, Na would just stay sodium. Cl would go from chlorine to chloride. So that's why NaCl is sodium chloride. And notice I changed the ending of my element. Now, the thing is, though, remember I told you if you have a polyatomic ion, though, you do not change the ending. So Ca is calcium. On your chart, CO3 is carbonate. So notice I just left it as calcium carbonate. I did not try to change the ending to I. So polyatomic ions keep the ending that's on your chart. All right, so let's look at some examples real quick. So let's say we have Na2O. All right, well, Na is what? Sodium. And O is oxygen, but because O is the negative one, and y'all, it always goes positive, then negative, just as we learned earlier in chapter 7. Positive one first, negative one second. All right, so instead of calling it oxygen, we got to change the ending, and so it becomes oxide. Now, you may think, well, why didn't we do anything with this too? Like some of y'all remember from physical science using prefixes like di and tri, like carbon dioxide. Well, we don't use those for regular metals. We don't focus on the subscripts when we're naming for a regular metal. So it's just sodium oxide. All right, so let's look at our next one. It's AlBr3. Well, what's Al? Al is aluminum. And Br is bromine, but because it's the negative one, we're going to call it bromide. All right, aluminum, bromide. Again, we don't focus on the three. The three doesn't matter in the name. All right, next we have one with the polyatomic ions. So let's keep in mind what I said about polyatomic ions and not changing the ending. So Li is lithium. And SO4 is on your chart and it is sulfate. So notice, y'all, I did not change the ending. Lithium sulfate. It remains just as it is on your polyatomic ion sheet. All right, and so that's it for naming, okay? Or at least for regular metals. So hopefully you thought this was pretty simple. That's why I decided to make a video lesson for it, because I thought it was pretty easy too. All right, so maybe you want to pause the video real quick and try these three on your own, because that's, of course, what I would have done in classes. I would have been like, y'all try these. Okay, so pause it, try these on your own, and then you can check back to make sure they're right. All right, so I'll assume you've already tried all of these. Okay, so first one, we have LiNO3. NO3 is a polyatomic ion, so am I going to change the charge? No. So what is Li? Li is lithium. And what is NO3? It's on your chart page. It is nitrate. And so again, notice I did not change the ending of the polyatomic ion. All right, next one, we have Ca2PO43. Don't let all those subscripts throw you off. It doesn't matter. We have Ca and we have PO4. So Ca is what? Calcium. PO4 is on your chart and it is phosphate. Calcium phosphate. All right, and then last one, we are starting with a polyatomic ion. Don't let that throw you off either. Okay, what on your chart is NH4 called? It is called ammonium. Okay, and then our second element is oxygen, but because it's the second one, we're going to call it what? we got to change the ending to I, oxide. Okay, so obviously I can't ask you to raise your hand to see if you got it right, so I would just hope that you got it right if you tried these on your own. Okay, so remember, just name the first element, Change the ending of the second element to ide, or if it's a polyatomic ion, just list the name of the polyatomic ion. Easy enough, right? Well, the thing is, of course, if we learn how to do it one way, we got to learn how to do it the other way. So here I've been giving you the formula and we've been writing the names, but we got to be able to go the opposite way too. You've got to be able to write the formula if I give you the name. So when you write the formula of a compound that starts with a regular metal, you must remember to balance the charges. Y'all, if I could beat something in your head this year, it would be balanced charges. You will miss more things throughout this whole year because you forget to do this than almost anything else. Okay, so we've learned how to balance charges in Chapter 7 already, so you just use that knowledge. 
Okay, so if I have aluminum bromide, what does everybody give me as their answer? This right here. This ain't gonna cut it, it's not right. You didn't cross your charges. Okay, so aluminum is in group 13, so it has a charge of plus three. Bromine is in group 17, it has a charge of negative one, so we cross the three down. So our answer should actually be ALBR3. Don't miss something over such a simple thing. Okay, for example, calcium plus two, Cl minus one, we cross the two down. Remember, don't bring the positive and the negative sign, just the number itself. And you don't need to cross a one down, a one's understood. Okay, also remember, if they already cancel, don't cross them. So if we have plus two minus two, that already cancels out. So we don't cross anything and we just get BAO. All right, so let's look at some doing the crossing of charges. So don't forget before we start, if this is our periodic table, the charges. Okay, group one's plus one, group two's plus two. The middle is positive, but we don't know what it is because it could be multiple charges. So we'll get to the middle tomorrow. All right, you have plus three, plus or minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Okay, so let's start with aluminum chloride. So what's aluminum? Well, it's Al. Aluminum is right here on the periodic table. And so what charge does it have? It has a plus three charge. Chloride is Cl. Chlorine is over here on the periodic table, so it has a negative one charge. So what do I cross down? I would cross down that three. So it's AlCl3. All right, let's look at our next one because crossing charges works the same way with polyatomic ions. Okay, so we have calcium acetate. So what's calcium? Calcium is Ca. It's in group two, so it has a plus two charge. Acetate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. It is C2. H3O2 with a negative 1. Okay, so what should I cross down? Well, I need to cross down the 2. But how am I going to cross it down with this big polyatomic ion? Well, remember, you just put the polyatomic ion in parentheses and bring the 2 down. All right, that's all you have to do. That's calcium acetate. All right, let's look at our next one, lithium fluoride. So it's lithium, it's Li. Lithium is in group 1. So it has a plus one charge. Fluoride is F, not FL, and it's in group 17, so it has a negative one charge. So since we have plus one and minus one, do we need to cross? No, they already cancel out. Okay, so y'all, it's all about crossing charges. If you can remember to cross the charges, you're going to do great. All right, so let's erase, and then the next three, of course, you can try on your own. I'll just pause the video and try these so that way you can check your answer. Because remember, watching me do stuff, obviously you're always going to get it right. You need to be able to do it on your own. So I'll assume you've paused and tried these. So calcium carbonate. Well, calcium is Ca. It's in group 2, so it has a plus 2 charge. Carbonate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. It's CO3 with a minus 2 charge. So will the plus 2 and the minus 2 cancel? Yes. So do I need to cross? No, you just leave it CaCO3. All right, let's look at our next one. Hopefully you got that right. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum is Al. It's in group 13, so it has a plus three charge. Oxide is O. It's in group 16 and has a negative two charge. So I need to cross my charges. So what's gonna come here is the two. What comes here is the three. Okay, so y'all, what I want you to notice is I did not bring down the positive or the negative sign, only the number, because what that does is it makes both of them six, because three times two is positive six, negative two times three is negative six, and so those cancel out. That's the whole reason we balance charges, is because that's what the atoms are gonna do when they bond, is they're gonna make sure the charge cancels out to zero. All right, and then last one is cesium oxalate. So cesium is CS, it's in group one, so it has a plus one charge, Oxalate is on your uh, polyatomic ion sheet. Remember, if you see an eight or I ending, it came from the polyatomic ion sheet. So oxalate is C2O4 minus two. So what do I need to cross down? Well, I need to cross this two down. And so it's CS2C2O4. All right, so hopefully you got those right, or at least some of them. I mean, you may have missed some. It's your first time doing them. All right, so 
So let's move on to our section assessment. Well, maybe this video ain't gonna be quite as long as I thought. All right, so what, oh, let me erase this. Well, I'll leave it up here for this question. So what are the usual endings for the names of polyatomic ions? Well, yeah, just look at your chart. What do they all seem to end in? Eight and eight. You have nitrate, you have nitrite, you have sulfate, you have sulfite, you have chromate, you have carbonate, you have, you know, hydrogen sulfite. All end in eight or eight. Not all of them do, because you have things like ammonium and hydroxide and cyanide that don't, but most of them do. All right, how does a polyatomic ion differ from a monatomic ion? Well, y'all, the word itself gives it away. Poly means many. So it's made of many atoms with a charge. Mono means one, so it's one atom with a charge. And you can even put examples if that helps you. So like an example of a polyatomic ion will be NO3 minus. An example of a monatomic ion will be Cl minus. Just one thing. All right, so number three, it says write the formula. So when we write the formula, what do we have to remember to do? Cross those charges. All right, so we have beryllium chloride. Beryllium is BE. It's in group two, so we have a plus two charge. Chloride is Cl. It's in group 17, so we have a negative one charge. So what do I need to cross down? That two. All right, the next one is cesium sulfide. Cesium is CS, it's in group one, so it has a plus one charge. Sulfide comes from sulfur, it's S. It's in group 16 and it has a negative two charge. So what would I cross down? I would cross down the two. All right, part C is sodium iodide. Sodium is NA, and that's another thing y'all, make sure you go back and learn those 35 elements I told you to memorize. Okay, one, you know you don't get the names on the test, but two, it makes it a lot faster if you don't have to keep going and looking up what all these elements are. All right, sodium is Na, it's in group one, so it's plus one. Iodide comes from iodine, which is in group 17, so it's negative one. So if I have a plus one and minus one, do I need to cross? No, they already cancel out. And the last one is strontium oxide. So strontium is Sr, it's in group two, so we have a plus two charge. Oxide is oxygen, it's in group 16 with a negative two charge. So do plus two and minus two already cancel? Yes, they do, so I do not need to cross. Okay, and that's a common mistake is people will cross these because you get so quick at just crossing, 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 crossing. But if they already cancel out, you don't cross them. All right, so I think there's a few more questions on the next slide. And remember y'all, you can always pause and try these yourself. Okay, you don't have to wait for me to do all of them. Okay, so next thing, it says write the formula for these compounds. So these have polyatomic ions on them. All right, so we have sodium perchlorate. Well, sodium is Na, and it's in group one, so it has a plus one charge. Perchlorate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. It's ClO4 with a minus one charge. So do a plus one and a minus one cancel? Sure do, so we don't have to do anything else with that one. All right, let's look at our next one. Magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Magnesium is Mg, since it's in group two, it has a plus two charge. Hydrogen carbonate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. Okay, hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 with a negative one charge. So I have a plus two and a minus one, so I need to can't cross down my two. But how do I do that? Well, this is a polyatomic ion, so I'll put it in parentheses and put my two. And that's it. All right, last one is calcium acetate. Calcium is Ca. It's in group two, so it has a plus two charge. Acetate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. It's C2H3O2 with a minus one charge. So I have a plus two and a minus one, so what am I gonna cross down? The two. How do I do that? Well, this is a polyatomic ion, so I put it in parentheses. Okay, so that's what it's like crossing charge for polyatomic ions, but we already did that in chapter seven. Hence the reason this is a video lesson, because you already know how to do this. All right, number five, it says, identify any incorrect formulas and explain your answers. Okay, well, let's just go through and see what it should be. All right, so we have magnesium, which would have what charge? Magnesium's in group two, so it would have a plus two charge. We have sulfate, which is SO4, that's on your polyatomic ion sheet. If you look at your polyatomic ion sheet, it has a negative two charge. 
So should we have brought down a two and a three or should it have just remained like this? It should have remained like this. We shouldn't have brought down subscripts at all, okay? So this would be an incorrect formula and there's the correct formula, okay? They crossed down charges that didn't exist. All right, so let's look at our next one. We have RB3AS. All right, so RB is in group one, so it's gonna have a plus one charge. AS is in group 15, so it has a negative three charge. So would it have made sense to cross the three down? It would have, so this would be a correct formula. All right, so let's look at part C. We have BECL3. BE is in group two, which means it has a plus two charge. CL is in group 17, which means it has a negative one charge. So should I have crossed a two or a three down there? I should have crossed a two down. Okay, it should have looked like this. BE plus two CL minus, and me cross a two down, not a three. Okay, so this also would be an incorrect formula. And then let's look at part D. NA is in group one, so it has a plus one charge. F is in group 17, so it has a negative one charge. So do plus one and minus one cancel? Yes, so should I cross down anything? No, and they didn't. So that would also be considered a correct formula. Okay, so the main thing to remember from section 9.1 is when you're naming a compound that starts with a regular metal, which by the way, regular metals again are in groups one and two, not hydrogen and aluminum. Um, when you're naming a compound that starts with a regular metal, name the metal, add I to the non-metal, unless of course it's polyatomic ion. And then when you're writing the formulas, you just need to remember to cross charges. If you'll remember that, 9.1 will be a breeze.